Hey Internet, RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're taking a look at UBS's full credit card catalog as of mid-2022. So in typical fashion, of course, we will learn a little bit more about UBS as a banking company. We will talk about the rewards, points, and redemptions. We'll talk about the cards they have, both personal and business. Of course, come on the other side of this, figuring out if UBS cards are worth your time and consideration to add to your wallets. Of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Now, as we don't talk about UBS much, and they're relatively new to the credit card scene, I think they kind of added the credit card lineup or kind of revamped it uh, maybe a few years ago. Let's start out with the classic Did You Know slide. So here we have it again, UBS. It used to stand for Union Bank of Switzerland, but now it's actually UBS Group AG. Technically, this did happen quite some time ago, but I don't know if it's a, a well-known name around here. So this happened because of a merger of UBS plus Swiss Bank Corporation back in 1998. So they're kind of like an investment slash private bank setup. And interestingly enough here, they're the largest Swiss banking institution. They're the largest private bank in the world and the third largest European bank, about 61 billion market cap as of 2021. And then, you know, to get these, to get these cards, because again, it is kind of like a private bank type setup, you were probably going to need a banking relationship. You know, if you, even if you go to the website, I don't know that you, there is no application button actually but you can't I don't know that you can just phone in like head like to apply over the phone they'd probably be happy to try to sell you something but really, one, it'll still be interesting to take a look at these cards. But number two, what they kind of mean by private bank is they, they tend to offer the same exact services, you know, as a regular bank, but they're definitely more catered toward higher net worth individuals. There's more, you know, you have your own legitimate relationship manager. I know every bank says you have a personal banker and relationship manager, but over there, you know, private banking types, if you really have a relationship manager, if you really have a private banker working with you, more tailored approach, more hands-on, again, catered to the higher net worth folks. So again, that's kind of why we see you know UBS getting into credit cards or getting into recently getting into credit cards more or less you know because they want to offer you everything right so on some level it's no different than how you know banking over here you just have to have a few more zeros on the one side of the comma than the other to get in there so all that to say they have credit cards now so let's take a look at the rewards points um, structure earnings and redemptions then we'll get into the cards themselves because again i know a lot of us aren't going to qualify for these cards but it's still kind of interesting to take a look at and so when you jump into it here with the rewards um earnings and redemptions at least um, so the cards earn points so ubs my choice rewards is going to be the program redemptions you have the standard redemptions on uh, travel merchandise statement credit gift cards charity and unique experiences so don't quite know what unique experiences are but it sounds fun now before we go on to the cards i do want to give you an example now again these are going to be primarily for travel right that's kind of the redemption they're going for but the travel redemption is interesting so this is an example straight from their site so if you redeem twenty five thousand points that's going to give you a 350 dollars airline ticket which is actually a valuation at 1.4 cents a point which is actually pretty good and really a lot better than you would expect going into this video. Now, you could also do a 50,000 point redemption for a $900 airline ticket, and that would get you a 1.8 cent valuation cent per point, which is both pretty good. Now, interestingly enough though, then it kind of goes downhill, so NerdWallet did the research for us on this one, but you must book the entire ticket with points to get that elevated value, which is okay, except you can pay the points differences in 5,000 point increments, right? So, you know, I, I don't know how many uh, airline tickets are going to come out evenly at $350 or $900. So on one hand, you're going to get some really good valuation. Then after the fact, if you want to pay the rest in points, which you need to, to get that full valuation, it kind of falls apart there. It's a really odd way that they do that. Now, you do, I believe, have the option to pay with cash as well, cash points combination, but again, you're not going to get that high valuation. So it's it's just really weird how they set that up. Now, the rest of the redemptions, again, I'd probably stay away from merchandise, gift cards. You usually don't really do that well on, especially, again, when they have their airline tickets set up to be 1.4, 1.8 cents initially. So with that, though, what are these cards? How do you earn these points? Well, let's start out with the personal cards first, and here we have it. So the first one here we have is the uh, Visa Signature Card. They didn't even bother to change the name on it. I like it. So the annual fee, there is none. Zero dollars. Multiplier is a classic 1x back on all purchases, which is fitting of a no annual fee card, I guess. Uh, benefits here. You are going to get $140 Amazon Prime membership credit if 
if you spend twelve thousand dollars in the first year but that spend requirement is waived in year number one so that's mighty nice of them they does have cell phone coverage and then no foreign transaction fees as well now the big brother of the uh, personal cards is the ubs visa infinite card which is interesting because there's really not that many visa infinite cards in circulation so we have an annual fee of $495. Multipliers here, you're talking about 3x on airlines, 2x gas and groceries, and one back on everything else. Um, benefits here, you can get a $500 credit if you spend $25,000 a year on the card. Um, you can get a $250 airline incidental credit. Does not That one doesn't come with a spend requirement. Um, no foreign transaction fees, priority pass select membership, a global entry or TSA pre-check credit. You can value that at $100. Primary CDW, which is always is good to see and cell phone insurance and with that we're going to flip over to the business cards it is i guess worth noting that they they do put a debit card on their credit card page that they're very proud of but we don't really need to talk about debit cards here so on to the business cards um so first of all you're going to have the visa business uh, the visa signature business card so you can see we're doing the exact same thing as the personal cards no annual fee one back on all purchases you get the same amazon prime credit of 140 dollars with the same twelve thousand dollars in spend cell phone insurance no foreign transaction fees but this time you do we have primary CDW, which is um, pretty good considering this is a no annual fee card. Now, in addition to that, if you prefer cash back, you have the cash rewards card, the Visa Business Cash Rewards to be specific. Annual fee of $150. Multipliers here, you can get 2x back on purchases up to the first 100k a year. Then after that, you drop down to 1x back on everything. No foreign transaction fees. And again, primary CDW. And then to close this out, they have the Visa Business Infinite card. So this one looks pretty similar. Again, you, you jump up to a $550 annual fee. Um, 3x back on airlines and hotels. 2 X on business expenses. They didn't really go into much detail on what that covered, and then 1x back on all their purchases. Now, the only real difference here in the benefits is you do get a $350 airline incidental credit, which really does help offset the annual fee hike. And then they do have some private aviation access in there as well. So, you know, but overall, you, again, these personal versus business are kind of mirror copies of each other. And so there we have it. That is the full lineup of UBS cards as it stands today. And, you know, the cards are, it's actually pretty interesting, right? This is, I almost sum it up as like, this is what happens when you're lazy, but you make credit cards for wealthy clients. So on the surface, yes, yeah, some of this stuff doesn't look great, right? But on the other hand, you know, what they've done is they've actually taken almost all the network benefits. And what a network benefit is, is, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express offer all these benefits, protections, your CDWs, all that kind of stuff to the issuer. And the issuer can choose to take it, reject, or even make the perks better. And normally I don't put all of these on slides because people really only care about the multipliers and the highlight benefits like the credits and things like that. But I will put up their comparison from their site. You can see what they've done is basically they've taken all the network benefits that Visa offers. I mean, their Visa Infinite card is basically a cutout from the Visa Infinite website, which is not a bad thing. So what you end up with is like, on one hand, it's a pretty good card talking about the Infinite card because again, there's not that many Infinite cards in, in circulation because it has all the underlying perks that you would want. All the business cards give you primary CDW, which is pretty good. But on the other hand, they just kind of forgot to add an actual rewards program around their card setup, right? I know they have the UBS My Choice. That's what they're going for, but still wasn't really that well executed on the points. But actually adding the card benefits, they didn't do too bad on. I mean, the Amazon Prime membership is a bit much for $12,000 in spend, but overall you can kind of see that the, this kind of fits their target demographic right it's folks who already bank with them who have the legit private bank experience and they simply just want a card or two you know with the place they bank with and for them that's that's this card right it's gonna be super easy to give them here you go no big deal it's reasonable and they do get a level of perks which you probably care more about at that level now you know for everyone else again not that you could even get this anyways because i'm pretty sure you're going to need some kind of investment bank private bank relationship with with UBS, but still. So if you are that person banking with UBS and your wealth manager just called you up and said, do you want one of these cards? You know, I think the Visa Infinite one is the most interesting one, again, because of all the infinite benefits it brings. I would still say maybe you want to look at the Sapphire Reserve, um, the Capital One Venture X, or even the U.S. Bank um, Reserve card. Those are the other three um, Visa Infinite cards that do offer like the vast majority of these benefits, plus a better reward structure, especially on the Sapphire Reserve and the Venture X card. You'd probably do better on those. I would 
would imagine. But again, if you just want to stick in one place and you're like, hey, I'm way too rich to care about points and redemptions and all that, well, then you know, fine, because they're bringing in all the benefits, I think that makes these serviceable at best. But Again, love to hear your thoughts on that. So anyways, guys, that's been a look at UBS's full credit card catalog. So if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found a particularly interesting course, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, we're right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Question for you guys is, one, let me know what you think about the UBS card collection. You know, would you, if you already have a relationship, which one do you think about pulling the trigger on? Are you going to look somewhere else? And if you don't have a relationship, you know, what do you think about them as well? Do you feel like you're missing out or you know you're probably good as is love to get your thoughts on that but anyways guys that's gonna do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching and talk to you very soon in the next one